Fossils by Anne O. Squire. Find the truth. Everything you are about to read is true, except for one of the sentences on this page. Which one is true? True or false? Scientists can learn about all the world's extinct animals by studying fossils. True or false? Dinosaurs had been extinct for more than 60 million years before humans first developed. Find the answers in this book. Chapter 1. Clues from the Past Did you ever wonder how scientists have learned so much about Earth's history? How do we know what the dinosaurs look like, what they ate, or where they lived? How do we know that fish existed before mammals? How have we learned about our human ancestors? The answer to these questions is through the study of fossils. Fossils are the remains or traces of animals and plants that have been preserved in the Earth's rocky crust. Digging up fossils. Most fossils are buried beneath the earth. Paleontologists excavate or dig and remove them from the surrounding rock. Fossils are delicate, so scientists must work carefully. Excavators may mist water on the rock to soften it. Then they use tools such as dental picks to chip the rock away. Large bones are usually encased in plaster of Paris to protect them for transport. They are shipped to laboratories for further study. Bones and more. When you think of a fossil, you probably picture a dinosaur bone or even a complete skeleton. But fossils can be more than just bones. Teeth, shells, and other hard parts of plants and animals can also become fossils. Sometimes an animal leaves behind traces, such as footprints, tooth marks, or even impressions of its skin. Clear fossil impressions of dinosaur skin give us a good idea of what these ancient animals look like. Another thing that animals leave behind is their droppings. Fossilized droppings are called coprolites. They can tell us a lot about an animal's size and what the animal ate. Worms and other soft animals cannot become fossils, but the burrows they dig can become fossilized. By looking at the space in which an animal lived, we can learn a lot about its size and shape. Fossils young and old. Life has existed on Earth for billions of years, so a 10,000-year-old fossil is actually very young. Animals preserved during Earth's last ice age are among the youngest fossils ever found. Scientists in Australia recently discovered fossils that may be the world's oldest. These fossilized single-celled or organisms are 3.4 billion years old. Earth was formed 4.6 billion years ago. At first, conditions were harsh and very hot. The air had no oxygen. Around 540 million years ago, animals that we might recognize began to develop. This was the beginning of the Paleozoic era. Sponges, worms, and snails were among the first animals. Fish developed around 400 million years ago, followed by insects and amphibians. In the mil middle of the Paleozoic era, 310 million years ago, reptiles developed. Ruling reptiles. The Mesozoic era came next, lasting from 250 million to 65 million years ago. Reptiles dominated the land overshadowing all other animals. In fact, this era is often called the Age of Reptiles. Dinosaurs such as Tyrannosaurus rex, Stegosaurus, and Triceratops roamed the earth at various times during this period. Yet the Age of Reptiles did not last forever. By the end of the Mesozoic era, all the dinosaurs had become extinct. The Age of Mammals 
After the dinosaurs became extinct, mammals developed rapidly, replacing the ruling reptiles on land. This age of mammals from 65 million years ago until the present is known as the Cenozoic Era. Giant mastodons and saber-toothed cats were some of the animals that lived during this time. The first modern humans developed very recently, only about 200,000 years ago. What are fossil fuels? Fossils provide much of the energy we use today. Coal, oil, and natural gas are called fossil fuels. Hundreds of millions of years ago, wet tropical areas filled with plants and animals covered much of the earth. When the organisms died, they sank to the bottom of the swamps, oceans, and bogs. They were buried under layers of sand and clay. Over millions of years, heat and pressure in the Earth's crust transformed the matter into coal, oil, and natural gas. Chapter 2. Preserved in Stone We know that fossils are usually excavated from layers of rock, but how did they get there? The material surrounding the fossil didn't start out as rock. In fact, most fossils were formed underwater or in places where the ground was wet and soft. The process of fossilization begins when a plant or animal dies and is quickly covered up by layers of mud or sand. Let's take a look at an example of how this happens. Becoming a fossil. Some 200 million years ago, a shallow ocean covered what is now California. A fish living in the ocean died and sank to the bottom. Before another animal had a chance to eat it, the fish was covered by a thin layer of sand. Over time, layers of sand and mud piled on top of the fish's body, burying it deep under the ocean floor. The skin and soft parts of the fish decayed, leaving only the skeleton behind. After millions of years, there were many, many layers of sand covering the fish. The pressure from the upper layers was so great that the lower layers hardened into rock. The bones of the fish were trapped inside the rock. As water seeped through tiny cracks and spaces in the rock, it dissolved minerals in the fish's bones. Other, harder minerals replaced them. The result was a petrified fossil of the fish's skeleton. Finding fossils. Millions of years later, Earth's climate has changed and portions of the ocean have dried up. Earthquakes altered the landscape, bringing deep layers of rock to the surface. Rocks that were once at the bottom of an ocean are now pushed up to form a mountain range. Present day paleontologists excavating a California hillside are thrilled. They find the perfectly preserved skeleton of the fish that sank to the bottom of the sea all those years ago. Lost in Time We learn a lot about extinct animals and plants by studying their fossils. By examining dinosaur fossils, scientists have learned how large these reptiles were and how they walked. They also discovered what dinosaurs ate and what their skin texture was like. Is it possible to find out this much about every animal that lived during prehistoric times? Unfortunately, the answer is no. Without a trace, it is not easy to become a fossil, and many animals never get the chance. Fossils are usually, though not always, the preserved hard parts of an animal, its bones, teeth, or shell. Soft-bodied animals such as slugs, worms, jellyfish, and octopuses have no hard parts to leave behind. Most of these animals have vanished from Earth's history without a trace. Even animals with bones do not always become fossils. To become a fossil, the body must be covered up very quickly after death. In most cases, that doesn't happen. After an animal dies, another animal may eat its body. Its bones may be chewed up or scattered. The animal's body may also decompose or rot. 
There are many extinct animals and plants we will never know about because they didn't leave fossils behind. Chapter 3 A Sticky Situation There are other ways in which fossils can form. In some cases, animals became trapped in tar, ice, or sticky tree sap. These materials can create an even more interesting fossil than when excavated from layers of rock. Skin, hair, and other soft parts that would normally decay are often preserved. As a result, scientists can see exactly what these animals looked like. Deep freeze. If you've ever heated up a frozen pizza, you know that cold is a good way to preserve food. Intense cold can also preserve animals. Mammoths dating back 10,000 to 30,000 years have been found buried in ice in Alaska and Siberia. Despite their age, these animals were found in good condition. Their hair, skin, bones, muscles, and internal organs were intact. In some cases, the remains of their last meal were still in the stomach. Stuck in sap. Ancient pine trees, just like those of today, gave off a sticky sap. Sometimes small animals, such as insects, spiders, or lizards, stepped in the oozing sap and got stuck. More layers of sap eventually covered them completely. When the sap hardened over time, the bodies of these unlucky animals were perfectly preserved. The brownish-yellow fossilized sap is called amber. Scientists have found amber that contains insects and lizard that lived 40 million years ago. The La Brea Tar Pits. Near the skyscrapers of downtown Los Angeles, California, are several small lakes. These are no ordinary lakes. They are filled with tar, which has been oozing out of the ground for thousands of years. Much of the tar has hardened. In the late 1800s, people noticed that the hardened tar contained bones. Scientists looked at the bones and found that they belonged to an extinct sloth that lived thousands of years earlier. The La Brea tar pits contain the preserved bones of many different animals. The bones give scientists a good picture of life in the region tens of thousands of years ago. Scientists argue that thirsty animals were attracted to rainwater that collected on the tar's surface. Many animals became trapped in the tar as they drank. Struggling to free themselves, they attracted wolves, saber-toothed cats, and other predators who often became trapped as well. The Big Truth, Mary Anning Fossil Hunter. Mary Anning was born in 1799 in Lyme Regis on the southern coast of England. To make extra money, her father searched the seaside cliffs for fossils to sell. Each winter, fierce storms battered the cliffs, wearing away layers of rock and exposed fossils buried within. He often took Mary and her brother Joseph on his trips. After her father died, 11-year-old Mary continued fossil hunting on her own. In 1810, Mary surprised everyone by unearthing the skeleton of an ichthyosaurus, a large marine reptile from the Jurassic period. She later discovered skeletons of Plesiosaurus, another marine reptile, and Tesserosaurus, a flying reptile. Fossil hunting was a dangerous job. In 1833, a landslide killed Mary's dog, Trey. Mary barely escaped. She continued to excavate fossils throughout her life and became one of the best known fossil hunters of her time. Chapter four, here, there, and everywhere. When you think of a team of paleontologists digging for fossils, you might picture a remote mountain range or a windswept desert. 
But fossils have been found almost everywhere on Earth, even north of the Arctic Circle and near the South Pole. Wherever you live, there is a good chance that scientists have found fossils nearby. Paleontologists working in the western and central parts of the United States and Canada have found lots of dinosaur bones. One of the best sites is in Utah at Dinosaur National Monument, where dinosaur fossils have been found in rock layers dating back 150 million years. Tyrannosaurus rex, Triceratops, and Stegosaurus bones have been found in Colorado and other western states. Dinosaur tracks have been found in many places, including Massachusetts and New York. Layers of rock. Most fossils are formed when layers of sediment build up. The rock that is created by these layers is called sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rock is recognizable by its crosswise layers. Each layer comes from sediment that is built up and turned to stone millions of years ago. One place to see sedimentary rock layers is the Grand Canyon in Arizona. Paleontologists have unearthed algae, coral, and other early marine fossils there. Know your state fossil. Did you know that many U.S. states have a state fossil? Utah's is the Allosaurus, a fierce three-ton dinosaur from the Jurassic period. Some 8,000 Allosaurus fossils have been excavated from a single site in Utah. Alabama's state fossil is the Basilosaurus, a fish-eating whale that lived more than 45 million years ago. New York state fossil is a sea scorpion that is more than 400 million years old. What's your state fossil? Return of the woolly mammoth. Can an extinct species be brought back to life? Some scientists believe so. Paleontologists recently uncovered a woolly mammoth preserved perfectly in the frozen soil of Siberia. Using DNA from the mammoth's thigh bone, researchers hope to clone the animal. If they can extract enough DNA, the scientists could place it into the egg cells of a living elephant. If it works, the elephant would give birth to a woolly mammoth bringing that long dead species back from extinction. Chapter five, learning from fossils. You might be surprised at how much we can learn from fossils. More than just dusty bones, fossils are the keys to our planet's history. Fossils can tell us what animals and plants lived on earth, when they lived and many other things. They can tell us what Earth's geography and climate were like millions of years ago. They can even give us clues to the behavior of our human ancestors. The story bones tell. The size of fossilized bones, of course, is a clue to the size of the animal. The size of a skull can give an idea of how large the animal's brain was. The size and shape of the teeth tell us if it ate plants or other animals. Footprints can help us estimate how heavy the animal was and whether it walked on all fours. Footprints also tell us whether it traveled alone or in groups. Knowing what lived when. Imagine that you could slice through sedimentary rock from top to bottom and look at the layers within. Fossils near the bottom are the oldest. Those on the upper layers are animals and plants that develop more recently. This is how paleontologists know that fish develop before reptiles and reptiles before mammals. Scientists can tell when an animal became extinct by seeing where its fossils are no longer found in the rock layers. Geography and Climate Fossils can tell us what Earth was like long ago. The discovery of fossilized fish on land shows that the area was once underwater. 
Finding similar fossils of land-dwelling organisms on two separate continents is a sign that those continents were once connected. Did you know that fossils of ferns and other warm weather plants have been found in Greenland and Antarctica? This means that these icy regions were much warmer millions of years ago. Our human ancestors. Certain animal fossils can even tell us about early humans. Scientists in Washington State recently made an exciting discovery. They found a mastodon rib with the spear point of sharpened bone lodged in it. The scientists determined the fossil is 14,000 years old. It is evidence that mastodons lived in the area during that time. It also shows that early humans made hunting tools out of bone. Who would believe that a fossil could tell us so much? Did you find the truth? Scientists can learn about all the world's extinct animals by studying fossils. This is false. Dinosaurs had been extinct for more than 60 million years before humans first developed. This is true.